Welcome to a Slapshot episode of the Russian Rulers podcast. Today's episode is on Peter the Great's arch nemesis, Charles the Twelfth of Sweden. Charles was born uh, on the 17th of June in 1682, and he was the son, only surviving son, of King Charles XI uh, and Ulrika Eleonora the Elder. Uh, he became king of Sweden upon the death of his father, in uh, 1697 at the age of 15. Uh, he was to rule Sweden for almost 22 years, many of them as a uh, military man. He was considered one of the most skilled generals of his era or of any era. He would take very small armies and defeat much larger ones like he did uh, at Narva against uh, Peter. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about whether Charles was a genius or if he was uh, perhaps not as quite as smart as everybody thought he was. Uh, I'm kind of a mixed bag on Charles the Twelfth. He was brilliant in the field, but he made some disastrous uh, decisions over the years. Uh, the whole idea of attacking Russia the way he did over those years, uh, not retreating from the winters and allowing his men to, to suffer as he did, and then to fight a battle uh, of almost Peter's choosing, uh, just because he had this uh, pig-headed type of mind that he had to get the decisive battle, which he got and lost uh, when he lost at Poltava. A couple of interesting things about Charles. Uh, he was not the 12th Charles as king of Sweden. He was actually only the 6th. Uh, why he called himself Charles the 12th and why his father would have called himself Charles the Eleventh when he was only the fifth Charles. Well, it's interesting. They used uh, Swedish mythology and numerology as a way of choosing what number would come after your name. Uh, so, you know, there was a kind of an interesting uh, little thing is he would have actually been Charles the Sixth instead of the the twelfth. Uh, he fought a number of fights uh, out there. He went, obviously, against Russia. He also defeated both Saxony and the Denmark-Norway uh, combination, uh, who had joined to kind of attack Charles and attack Sweden as part of this great northern war. Uh, he was quite adept at fighting these people. Um, in 1700, here he was, you know, very young, 18 years of age, and everyone thought, ah, the young guy, we can be defeat him. Uh, his first campaign was against uh, Denmark, uh, and it was against his own cousin, Frederick IV. Uh, he had threatened uh, Sweden, and it was very quick that he was able to destroy the uh, the army, and they had to uh, submit to the, what they call the Peace of Travendal in August of 1700. He then uh, went after uh, another cousin of his, uh, King Augustus of Poland. Uh, and he went out and he defeated him in a number of skirmishes over the years. Uh, then he went out against uh, Peter, where he won the Battle of Narva. Uh, there's been disputes as to how many people were actually killed at Narva. Uh, some say s the, the number was about as high as 17,000, others 7,000. I would go with the uh, lower number. It is very unlikely that that many people were killed there. And of course, the Swedes lost only 667 men. I find it very hard to believe. Uh, I think it was a lot of uh, propaganda that would have you know, said that it was that big of a battle. Uh, at that point, it was uh, very unusual that he did not attack the, uh, the Russians from there because he had such a superior uh, battle. But he really went after Poland because that's where he wanted. He wanted to put his people into the leadership. Uh, he put a uh, Stanislav Olejenski on the throne, uh, who was to you know aid Charles over the years, but not be a very good leader, uh, and he really didn't help a lot. Uh, then basically he went and he you know as I recounted in the last episode of Peter the Great and the Russian Rulers podcast, he went into Russia and when he went in to uh, attack Moscow. He came in with 77,400 men, according to most records. When he was defeated and he, uh, at the end, he had about 14,000 uh, to about 28,000 men left. Uh, when he fought uh, Peter, 
he was down to 14,000 men in his own army with him, and Peter had somewhere around 30 to 45,000, so it was a big superiority. And from there, he was forced to go down to the Ottoman Empire and escape and go under the uh, protection of Sultan Ahmed III. Uh, he schemed a lot. He was trying to get the uh, Turks to come in and help out and fight Russia, which he did for a, a brief moment. He was able to uh, raise somewhat about uh, 200,000 men, but then the, the uh, sheikh said, no, I've had enough of this. I don't want to, to fight uh, right now, and he backed out, and Charles was uh, had to head back to uh, Sweden. Uh, he lost a lot of, uh, what might you say, uh, esteem in the, um, the minds of many of the uh, people in, uh, uh, in Europe because of his loss to the Russians. Uh, it, one of his big allies was Great Britain, and they decided to uh, kind of give up and you know let the, the Swedes go out on their, their own because they wanted to keep on uh, bartering and, and trading with Russia, Poland, and other holdings of the Swedes. Uh, he came back to uh, Sweden about in 1714, and he decided to start another invasion. He wanted to invade Norway, which he believed was Sweden's right. Uh, he had occupied the capital, which at that time was known as Christiana, also known as Oslo, but the Norwegian forces uh, forced him to retreat, and he eventually lost that uh, fight. Uh, 1718, he tried once again the main force of about 40,000 men, and they were trying to go uh, out and try to take over, but he was killed on uh, December 11th of 1718, and uh, it was uh, supposedly with a bullet wound uh, to the skull, and this caused the collapse of the uh, army. The invasion failed, uh, and they spirited Charles uh, back to Norway. Uh, He's, you know, his legacy is that he was an incredible man. He was a very devout. Uh, he was abstained from women and alcohol, supposedly. Uh, that he was a real warrior king. But the big problem was Sweden was at its pinnacle of power at the time he took over. And when he was done, the Swedish Empire was in a state of collapse. So many say he was just this great warrior king. But we have to look at the uh, historical ramifications of his time, and it was not good. Uh, at the end, uh, he was, you know, defeated. His country lost a lot of uh, their empire. So I think looking at P uh, Charles the Twelfth, uh, I think not only when we we look at him in, in conjunction with his Great Northern War and his battle with Peter, is how he lost so much at that Battle of Poltava. It, I'm going to go over a lot of this next week and the uh, ensuing episode about Peter and the Russian rulers. To say that Poltava was not a milestone in Russian history is to almost put it mildly. It was one of the big moments in all of Russian history, but it was also incredibly important to the Swedes. Russia stood up. Sweden fell down. And so when we look at this... Uh, you know, we have to look at the overall reign of Charles's not being very successful for his people. Well, I hope you enjoyed that short little uh, Slapshot episode. I tried to keep it under 10 minutes today, and I hope all of you have a, a great Russian history week. Don't forget to visit the uh, website at russianrulers.podhoster.com. Also, the uh, uh, Facebook fan club page at Russian Rulers History Podcast. Uh, don't forget to leave a suggestion, make a comment, ask a question. And as always, до свидания и спасибо большое.